All right, let's get started. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hopefully, I'm not between you and dinner, and you had some good lunch, because um, it's always fun to do these 5 p.m. sessions. But welcome to the 10th annual reInvent. Uh, hope everyone's having a really good time. Uh, my pleasure to host you to this uh, really important topic about migration acceleration program. You know, it's, a, it's an area that we at AWS uh, substantially invest in and deeply care about. You know, cloud migrations remains one of the fastest, most economical ways for customers to achieve their transformation goals. And so we're going to talk about um, exactly what we do in the migration acceleration program. I've got some great tips and tricks, um, and we'll end with specific guidance on where you can actually get started uh, as a customer on your journey. My name is Faraz Shafiq. I'm the worldwide head of product management for cloud migrations and modernizations at Amazon Web Services. We'll also hear from Alon Radzi, who's the director of strategic alliances at Amdocs, a trusted partner as well as customer and a global uh, technology services provider. You know, before, before joining AWS just over a few years ago, uh, I myself was a senior IT uh, leader and worked across many different industries. And one thing that all the IT folks will very quickly resonate with is that there's always a slight tension and challenge in terms of technology strategy along with the business strategy. You know, IT leaders are always trying to juggle between the two and making sure that they can have their technology strategy that supports, if not becomes a catalyst for business transformation. But what happens is the business strategy changed quite, quite, quite a bit. And then hardware, software, infrastructure decisions are much, much harder to do. And so it becomes a big, big roadblock. And so many of our customers you know, chose to shut down their own data centers and move to AWS and saw significant benefits. And so we'll talk about how migration and modernization is a great first step to do that. Hope everyone had a chance to see uh, Adam Zalipsky, our CEO's uh, keynote this morning. If not, highly recommend you check it out. You know, one of the great examples that we saw was from NASDAQ and DISH. So NASDAQ mentioned a huge announcement in which they want to move their markets data over to AWS. Same thing with DISH. DISH has ambitions to launch a nationwide brand new 5G network completely on the cloud. And these things are just unbelievably simple now when you think about you know, the landscape in terms of technology, whereas previously this would have been a very, very difficult uh, project. And so one of the core things to understand during this presentation is that your IT strategy now will drive real business outcomes. And it's not just a simple data center or a architecture play, now it's really driving meaningful business outcomes and that's the key thing. And we see this across every single industry, across every single geography, and every single segment. We see customers that have been operating and functioning in their industries for decades, if not centuries. And some customers that are born in the cloud and raised in the cloud and will probably always operate on the cloud. And so you have two ends of the spectrum. But the key thing is that customers are migrating over to AWS because they see tangible benefits. Now, we at AWS understand that all customers have their own unique requirements, be it technology requirements, be it their culture, process, security, compliance, be it whatever. We know and understand that every customer is going to be unique. So we've, what we've done is we've created a framework that's learned by migrating thousands of customers that's applicable across every single industry. And the key thing here to, is to understand that migrations are not just a good to have anymore. They're actually becoming quite compulsory when you talk about building foundational capabilities. And then modernization sets you up for success in terms of agility. And again, go back to the examples of NASDAQ and DISH. The only reason and the only way that they're able to do and achieve the goals within the timelines is that they've adopted the cloud at a mass scale. And so we've seen many, many customers um, benefit quite significantly. And we saw you know, a few different examples that I'd love to share. Dow Jones is a global media and entertainment company, and they deliver news and business content uh, through brands like Wall Street Journal. They deliver financial and market news. Um, and investors rely on 
the timeliness and the accuracy of you know, this data point to make sure that they can make um, strong investment decisions. And so for Dow Jones, they understood that they're in the business of providing real-time good information globally. They're not in the business of running data centers. They're not you know, in the business of managing IT people. And so by, by shutting down their Asia Pacific data centers and moving to AWS, Dow Jones was able to save roughly 25% in, in cost savings, meanwhile also improving the product development velocity by 30%. And they're not alone. Coca-Cola is a global house sale um, brand name. They serve hundreds of millions of customers through their products every single day. And as you can imagine, it's a large, complex, global supply chain. And so for Coca-Cola, it was extremely important to make sure that they can do real-time analytics, make sure that they can do better and clear data insights so that they can serve their customers better. And so by migrating to AWS, they literally shifted 600 workloads to AWS in under 14 months. They were able to cut down one of their complex queries processing time from 36 hours down to about 10 seconds. And so we, we see this sort of pattern across many, many different global companies. And finally, I'll end with Expedia, which is a large um, travel um, and hospitality company. And same thing with Expedia. It's a, it's a trusted brand, but for them, information is absolutely critical. Their prices, their flights, everything needs to be lined up correctly for their consumers. And so for them, a big thing was innovation and making sure that they can build everything in a microservices-based architecture because they knew that as soon as airlines or other uh, brokers update their systems, their information needs to be relevant almost um, simultaneously. And so by moving to AWS, Expedia was able to do 360 times faster data analysis while improving their innovation velocity by almost 5x. And so customers migrate to AWS for many, many different reasons. And so we owe a lot to our early customers that you know, helped basically work with us and shut down their data centers and move to AWS. And we started to understand, well, what are the primary drivers for customers uh, moving and migrating to AWS? And the benefits can largely be categorized into a few different areas. Primarily cost savings. You know, cost savings is a huge, huge driver. Many customers have a singular focus on cost saving to start off the migration, especially if they're early in the cloud. But very quickly, we see that focus shift to innovation, agility, global scale and deployment, and obviously elasticity and security. Security is job zero for us at Amazon, and AWS specifically focuses on the security of our platform. And so everything that we do is designed for the cloud and meets the most stringent security requirements. And so many customers that start realizing those cost benefits then immediately focus on more and more transformative um, areas. Things like Internet of Things, machine learning, AI, ML um, have a huge, huge role to play as we talk about transformation. And so irrespective of what is the business driver, you know, we went back to many of our customers and started to understand, well, those are the drivers. What benefits can you actually expect and can we actually quantify them? And so we worked with IDC, went back to many of our customers and realized that the benefits gained are actually quite material. Many of our customers saw significantly strong results. The benefits are really real and significant. Customers can typically expect roughly 31% cost savings over comparable infrastructure. And these are average numbers. That means if you do it right, then you can actually see a much, much bigger gain. In fact, some of our customers saved more than 50% in cost saving. The other great example is on the IT infrastructure efficiency. So we all know that IT talent is hard to come by. It's not only hard to attract, but harder to retain as well. And then all the same for development. And so by, by helping uh, IT folks do more with less. That's the name of the game. That's, that's what we want uh, to empower our customers with. And so through AWS, we're able to offer roughly 60 to 65% more efficiency in terms of you know, IT folks spending time where it's relevant and where it's gonna lead to the most ROI. And finally, and my fan favorite is the agility. 
you know, customers typically start with the focus on cost and efficiency, but very quickly realize that there's a huge, huge focus on um, agility. Because at the end of the day, agility is what differentiates your business critical applications. Agility is all about responding faster to change. And if you go back to my original opening comment, it's how quickly you can align your technology strategy to your business strategy. And so if your business strategy is changing, you have to make sure your technology strategy is changing as well. And so being an agile organization allows you to do that. And the other advantage is that the cost saving and the efficiency gains that you get, you can actually take those resources and take those dollars and literally redeploy them to the areas that matter more. They could be new, innovative new services, like in the example of DISH, they're using their cost savings to develop the new 5G network. In the case of NASDAQ, they're focused on bringing in the new market uh, data over um, to public cloud. In fact, one of the big examples of agility is Amazon itself. And so we've seen that companies that are more agile will outperform other companies by a factor of magnitude. So it's not just a incremental enhancement, but in fact, it's a multiple multitude of investment. And one of the reasons we believe that Amazon is able to do so much more with less resources is agility. We at Amazon roughly do 15,000 releases shipped per day. And so many of the examples that you'll see at Amazon and AWS is a great example of why agility is so core to everything we do in transformation. And I really love this quote from um, our CEO, uh, Andy Jesse, who says that invention is all about simply two things, that you really have to try a lot of experiments and you have to reduce the cost of experimentation. So it's not about getting to the right answer the first time, it's how quickly and cheaply you can get to the right answer. And so if you reduce your cost of experimentation, you can really experiment a lot more and get to the right answer. Let me sort of play this out um, in what it looks like. So again, going back to my days before AWS, say I wanted to try a new experiment. Maybe I wanna launch a new consumer product. Maybe I wanna tr try a new pricing model. Maybe we wanna take our product that's successful in US to adopt to GDPR standards in Europe. Previously, what I would like to do, or had to do, I'd say, is find the headcount, find the budget, find the people, find the right resources, order hardware if needed, figure out what are the right software applications, understand what are the different SaaS or on-prem applications, understand what I'm going to build myself, what will I buy, what will I license, and so on and so on. And then if one thing just fails, so for example, you ordered the wrong hardware, it doesn't meet the specification, you build the wrong software, you literally have to scrap it, rebuild it, or have to spend very extensive cycles on fixing any of the changes. And it could be anything, maybe the staff are not trained correctly. So one mistake could be extremely costly. And that's why we see innovation uh, be hindered so many times um, at incumbents. With AWS and Power of Cloud, you're literally just a few clicks away. Let's say you wanna try a new machine learning model, just literally click on SageMaker, spin up a new instance, start playing around with the data. You don't like that model, you can shut it down, start over. And, and it, because it's pay as you go, you literally have very minimal cost impact. In fact, many of our experimentation is barely going to meet or exceed the free tier. So many of our experimentation offerings will actually be free um, to customers. And so the agility and the focus is really how can you reduce the cost for experimentation and moving to the cloud enables you to do that. Now we at AWS have a very, very unique vantage point and this is where I'm gonna give some best practices of what we've seen um, at AWS. So we've helped migrate thousands of customers at a large scale and, and tens of thousands at a much smaller scale. And what we've learned is that majority of the challenges that customers face during migrations or modernization journey um, are actually not technical. They're usually around culture, they're usually around strategy, governance and, and people and processes. And, and so we've got a very unique vantage point and we've learned from all these different migrations and basically packaged everything in the best practices called the Migration Acceleration Program. And these are kind of like our four high level um, sort of called the prescriptive guidance that we always want customers to understand. The first one is really um, strong executive leadership. 
That means having senior leadership conviction and alignment. The goals really need to be set down, um, top down, very clear, and ideally very aggressive goals. And the goals really need to be business goals. They should not be IT goals. Because at the end of the day, if your technology is helping drive business outcomes, then the goal should be business goals as well. And so we see a lot of customers set technology or infrastructure goals, which are completely misaligned with the business goals. So setting the top-down conviction, setting the right goals is going to be very, very key. Then the third one really is around building early muscle. So we see this a lot. Many customers start their migration journey, but then analysis paralysis sort of sets in. They don't know if they've taken the right steps. They don't know that they've um, brought in the right people to the room. They don't fully understand what the next steps would be. And so we see this a lot where the migrations or modernization get derailed very, very quickly. And so one of the, one of the core things that we do is make sure customers understand and are set up for success is to build muscle. So it's actually learn by doing. And so we help customers migrate a few applications, train a few people, because then they'll, be, they'll sort of see the whole life cycle play out and they'll understand what it takes. And then it's just rinse and repeat um, across the board. And we make sure that we help our customers across um, the entire life cycle. So building the early muscle for migration is super, super key. Don't wait on you know, consistent planning and design sessions. Actually migrate a few applications you know, jointly with AWS or our partners and see what it takes to actually get um, this migration done. And remember that you know, the, the strategy of migration uh, is also really varying, and I'll talk about that in just a minute. But building the right strategy and actually doing um, is going to be key. You know, finally is take a portfolio-driven approach. What that means is every single customer um, will have a unique sort of environment. And when I say an environment, it's not only just the technology environment, but it's also the culture. So they'll have a certain set of trained people, resources, and so many other things. And so one size will never fit all. And so while we will have a great structured approach and framework, we also recognize that each of, the, the, each of our customers will have to have some type of a tailored approach in terms of how we're gonna migrate or modernize um, their IT portfolio. So an example would be, you know, a typical IT portfolio consists of many different migration and modernization patterns. And so our idea is really leverage the full spectrum of patterns, not just focus on modernization for everything or lift and shift for everything. So let's take an example. There are certain applications and workloads that you'll be using that will be almost low to no rate of change. These are more commodity applications or workloads. They're really not value added. They're more enabling or a must have. Those applications actually can be simply lift and shift. And so we see well, roughly 50% or half of the IT portfolio typically be applications that are low to roll, no rate of change and more commodity. And so we can very quickly lift and shift them. Lift and shift means no structural or architectural changes to the code. You're just changing the, the, the location of where that application runs. And so by just simply lifting and shifting those applications, you can start benefiting from the cloud while you're focusing on modernization for the business critical applications. We roughly see 20% being SaaS candidate. That means these are more like productivity applications. They may have slight rate of changes, but they're again enabling the core business functions. And so there are great SaaS alternatives available out there. Instead of running, for example, SAP on-prem, you can run SAP on AWS. This way, you don't have to worry about the operational maintenance and infrastructure for SAP, where you're still getting the main benefits of that application. And so those 20% really can be SaaS. Then one huge benefit of cloud is to understand which applications are really not adding a lot of value to your portfolio. So these could be outdated old applications. This could be unoptimized architecture. And those are roughly 10% that we've seen. And so those we actually recommend retiring. So as you optimize your architecture, you'll be able to make your architecture much more leaner, much more simpler. Finally, is the remainder application, which is modernization. These are really business critical differentiating applications. These have a very high rate of change. 
And so it could be IoT, ML, AI, could be a mobile ticketing app for you know, large global airlines. So irrespective of what it is, these are your business differentiators. This is where you really need to focus on. And so we always recommend that the modernization or refactoring be focused on those 20% business differentiating ones. And so the key takeaway from this slide is that one size does not fit all. We want to make sure that we can create a strategy that is consistent with your organizational strategy and that gets you the most ROI. And so lift and shift still remains one of the easiest, quickest ways to get on the cloud, reserve that, get the cost benefits and the resources freed up and redeploy those cost benefits and resources for your business differentiating applications. And the key thing to understand here is that it's not always going to be migration or modernization. A lot of our customers say, well, I'm not entirely sure. I want to modernize, but most of the projects I'm doing are migration. And our answer is that actually has to be both. You know, your, your rate of change, your business outcomes, the type and profile of your application is quite key. And so if you're struggling to just get started, identify those workloads and applications that are, again, business usual, commodity, lift and shift them, and then you can focus your energy on the business differentiating ones. And so it really is both patterns. It's not either or. Finally, um, you know, all the stuff that I mentioned, like we've been able to leverage our understandings and our guidance and created a program called Migration Acceleration Program or MAP. So again, we've got a unique vantage point in helping migrate thousands of customers at a large scale and hundreds of thousands more um, at a smaller scale. And so this is a structured program that we actually help um, engage with our customers uh, directly with AWS or our partners. We taken all the best practices, all the learnings, all the lessons learned and packaged it into this framework. And so if you leverage the AWS Migration Acceleration Program, uh, you actually get the benefit of you know, the best in class um, methodologies, which is again, best practices or cloud adoption frameworks. Tooling uh, is hugely important for us. So having automation and tooling so that you can achieve your results faster, We've got a very rich um, ecosystem of partners, um, which basically will help um, address not only the domain expertise, but also the scale. And then professional services are, ourselves as well. Training is absolutely critical. So we have a structured way in which we can offer curated trainings uh, to our customers, make sure that they have the right people set up for success. And finally, we're, we're committed to the success of our customers. And so through this program, we actually invest in your migration and modernization program projects as well. And these are really rich investments because we want to make sure that our customers are successful. And so you can leverage the best in class learnings um, through AWS by leveraging the migration acceleration program. And the program really is designed in a simple three step um, process. And we've, we've really built out this approach and solidified and matured it over many, many years to make sure that this is an approach that works um, for many of our customers. So it really starts with assessment, where we basically come and work with our customers to understand what is the main business case? What are the main cost drivers? What are the reasons why the customers are, are migrating? We do a rapid discovery of their environment, understand applications, and workloads and start mapping out the different types of um, dependencies. We do a very extensive migration readiness assessment. This gives you a pretty good temperature reading of where you are as an organization and how ready you are to achieve the migration or modernization goal and how ready are you to get started. So once the assessment's done, you, know, you can think of this as a very strong, solid report card which gets you an analysis of where you are as an organization. Then we get into mobilize, which is again, learn by doing. We wanna get you started off very quickly and build that early muscle. So instead of spending time and energy on designing and planning, you can actually learn by doing and see how easy it is um, to actually move the applications. And so in the mobilize phase, really help customers do detailed discovery and planning. We build out a very extensive migration plan, which almost always is a multi-year, very strong migration plan. 
Um, we focus on migration experience where we can very quickly build out a new landing zone, a security profile. We can develop an operating model for, for our customers. And then finally, security and compliance um, is also core to all the stuff that we do. We also work with our customers to establish a skills center of excellence. As everyone knows, um, skills and training is super, super critical. And so as you're taking on a long multi-year migration and modernization journey, we want to make sure that you have the right assessment of your learning needs and that you have a, a curated training program that you can offer um, to your staff as well. And what you see on the top are the four different experience areas, which is portfolio, people, migrate, and platform. So within each of these focus areas, we actually have experience-based acceleration, which I'll talk about in just a minute, which helps you further accelerate all the stuff. That means if security, if you've already figured out your compliance and governance, and you just need to understand your external security, that's what we will focus on instead of walking through the entire thing. And so we're, we're very quickly able to navigate customers to the right stuff. And finally, the, the last stage is really migrate and modernize. This is where customers are now set up for success. They understand their organization. They've migrated a few different applications, maybe five or 10. And so they've understood exactly what it takes to migrate and modernize. Then it's all about scaling. And so it's a rinse and repeat, take that approach and consistently do that. The other key thing is operate and optimize. So as you start, Building and operating in the cloud, you also want to make sure that you're optimized for the cloud. And so we help our customers consistently optimize, making sure that they can uh, you know, continue to uh, improve on their cost posture, whereas improving agility and other stuff. And finally, it's really modernization because we want all the differentiating business critical applications to be modernized because our end customers really benefit from that agility. And so this three-phased approach is our migration acceleration program. And through this program, we've been able to um, help customers achieve their transformation goals in a much more quicker, much more economical fashion. And one of the reasons and one of the big levers is our experience-based acceleration. Think of this as a immersive, hands-on, agile approach where we can work with the customers and very quickly help them build the right capabilities. So it starts with design thinking and, and you, you know, basically bringing in the customer, working with the right resources, helping focus on the right areas. And so in terms of organizational capabilities, you know, we help break down silos, understand what the blockers are, create models that are self-sustaining and making sure our customers um, you know, are, are set up for success. And then the key thing is to identify the, the factors that would impede adoption, make sure that we can actually help align the right stakeholders and that the decision making is consistent across the board. And finally, we want to make sure that we can empower our customers to build and simplify processes and drive collaboration cross-functionally across our organization. And so experience-based acceleration or EBA is a core methodology within the migration acceleration program in which we engage customers across the board. I'd like to invite Alan Radzi, our customer and partner from Amdocs, and Alan's gonna talk about how AWS has helped Amdocs um, achieve some of their goals. Hello. Thanks, Faz. So, nice to meet you, Alan Radzi at, uh, from Amdocs. Uh, I'll run really quickly through who's Amdocs first, uh, so you know a little bit about uh, what we are, who we are, what we're doing. Uh, and we're focusing on modernizing and automating and supporting the communication and media business for over 35 years. We're not a small company, over 27,000 employees, uh, scattered around the whole spectrum of services and products uh, towards the communication and media uh, industry from portfolio, which is BSS, OSS, business supporting systems, operating supporting system, network, media, cloud, uh, and services, which means that we're not only an ISV and we're not only an SI, we're kind of doing it all for that specific, uh, for that specific industry. I wanna touch today or talk today about uh, an, 
an effort that we did with a product called Neo to move the product, the development, and uh, later on other parts of the uh, operation to uh, AWS. So Neo started as uh, an on-prem uh, product. It's an operating operation supporting system OSS uh, product that does all kind of uh, decomposition and orchestration for uh, for telcos. And it right now is a cloud native microservice based uh, based product, very flexible, uh, supporting the business uh, in a in a very flexible and automated uh, way, a unified uh, platform uh, to orchestrate very complex orders and very complex operations uh, across the across the telco network. Amdox brings to the table very long experience. As I said before, over 35 years know-how of the telco industry, starting from, from, for those of you who are old enough, Yellow Pages, uh, and <clears throat> through uh, plain, simple telephony systems, wireline systems, mobile in the early days, and today mobile, media, networks, 5G, you name it. Together with uh, AWS expertise working very closely and with a very close partnership uh, with AWS, we were able to develop a set of tools uh, <clears throat> that are all certified and designed to work natively on AWS for the better results and better satisfaction of our uh, joint customers. Driving to proven results, we already have few very major workloads, customer workloads on AWS today. And for those of you who are familiar with the telco uh, industry, putting a telco uh, workload on any other platform that, than what they're used to uh, for God knows how many years is super complex. We already have few systems in production by now. We have over 10 transformations. Uh, some of them are huge transformations. Uh, in the making, and uh, the number is growing dramatically. The whole triangle together of the Amdocs expertise, working together with AWS to provide business results, better business results to our customers, is the secret sauce for us in this journey to the cloud. We can allow our customers seamless upgrades very simple to upgrade a microservice, much harder to upgrade a big monolith like we used to have before. Less, much less pains when you do uh, upgrades this way. As someone who was uh, owning production for quite a few years, service, uh, service impact due to upgrade is huge impact to the business. Uh, when a, a production system is taken down for five, six, seven, eight hours, once a month, once every two weeks, it's a huge major, it's a huge uh, business uh, uh, problem. And with working with AWS on cloud native and leveraging on cloud native technologies, we can mitigate that and pretty much get to zero downtime. And of course, cost reductions, major cost reductions as far as uh, <coughs> suggested before, and we're gonna see in a second. We are, as I said, in this journey for quite a while. Uh, a major transformation in uh, Vodafone in Europe uh, for this NEO system. We're talking about, as, as I said, many, many, many different transformations. NEO is only one product, one uh, solution that we are providing to the market. And this slide is focusing on that, but I can probably show 20 slides like that. Vodafone, a major transformation right now in, uh, in Europe. Another North American MSO, uh, which reference is not public yet, uh, <clears throat> with a very big OSS transformation. Another one in APAC, a major, major provider in, uh, provider in APAC, who's going through this exact uh, journey as we speak, taking an old on-prem OSS system, an orchestrator, uh, <clears throat> a decompositor, modernizing it, upgrading it, improving the business benefits it provides to, to customers, and putting it on AWS. With all the buzzwords underneath, we are very much buzzword compliant on this, uh, always on scalability, uh, blue-green, seamless upgrades, everything's working as should be, using, of course, all 
uh, AWS uh, great services uh, underneath. So what we did, together with the amazing help of the AWS team, we have decided on a three-step uh, journey, which, by the way, is going to be much more than three, three so far. Uh, starting small, taking one single system out of the OSS Neo platform, upgrading it, modernizing it, putting it in production for one customer, uh, that customer in APAC that I mentioned before, and getting the experience, getting the confidence, getting the training for the people. People are getting to, to love and experience the platform and gain the confidence to move on. Then we had an EBA journey party, which was amazing. Three days, by the way, through pandemic, pandemic mode, the, journey, the, the party wasn't a party like we used to have before of all people together and pizzas and beers and whatever. No pizzas, no beers, unless you order one at home. Uh, but it was a Zoom-based uh, uh, party, very successful, 20 engineers running through three days. And in three days, they were able to stabilize their development environment on AWS, fully on AWS, leave the good old environments that they used to develop on uh, before and start running. It was an amazing experience. No time, full bang. Later on, continued with the rollout to 75 engineers. By the way, I think that today we're at around 100 engineers already running the development environment fully on, uh, on AWS. The benefits we saw with this were amazing. First thing, first and foremost, for me, I'm a people's person. Engineers don't want to go back. They love it. They enjoy it. They are feeling comfortable with it. They have the confidence to, uh, to stay there. They don't want to go back. And that's, to me, as a, as, a, as a manager, as a leader, is the best message. Then I own a PNL as well. So 32% uh, overall cost reduction is great news for our development environment. Development is always kind of an overhead and be able, be able to save 32% uh, on the expense of uh, development, environment, development, non-functional testing, testing in general, it's a great achievement. We are not stopping here. Our next goal is to move the whole operation of NEO, all development of NEO, uh, around 300 engineers working fully on AWS, full cloud native uh, development, not only production, moving production workloads from now on to AWS uh, on, uh, as a cloud native uh, product. Move core and support, which are additional efforts that we still need to do some work with and move them as well to AWS uh, and support more AWS services. The goal here, the MDOC's motto is make it, make it amazing. The goal here is to get business benefits to our customers and help our customers provide amazing service to their customers, and by that we're all successful. Back to Faraz. Thanks, Alon. Appreciate it. So one of the things <clears throat> you know, that, that stands out um, in Alan's talk is, you know, within three days they were able to uh, fully stabilize a, a, a dev environment. And you know, a lot of, I get a lot of uh, questions from customers. It's like, what's the secret sauce? How, how is it actually possible? And I usually show this slide. This is what I talk about, that AWS is consistently investing in removing barriers in migrations and modernization through automation and tooling. We understand that migrations and modernization are complicated and hard. So it's making sure that we have the right tooling that we can offer customers that will reduce those barriers, barriers to adoption. And so many, many things that we do will focus on automation tools and making sure that we can either offer the best in class services that we've built or that we've acquired or we partner with in our very rich ecosystem. And so Cloud Endure is a great example uh, where Cloud Endure is a company that we acquired and essentially is uh, one of the fastest, most uh, economical ways to do lift and shift customers. It's extremely fast, non-disruptive, 
uh, very, very flexible, works across a wide range of operating systems and applications and databases. It's robust, it has non-disruptive continuous replication, and it's extremely secure. Many customers use Cloud Endure for disaster recovery, uh, but it still is one of the uh, great tool sets that we have in our toolkit that offers customers very quick, rapid lift and shift migrations within minutes and hours instead of weeks and months. And so our investment and our continued focus on tooling is a huge, huge area of focus, and that helps um, our customers you know, reduce the time and the cost that it takes to migrate. And Cloud Endure is just one example out of a majority of a huge suite of um, you know, tooling and automation that we have. You know, we, everything from you know, assess and decision support in evaluations and application dependency in understanding uh, your workloads, in, in, in having a, a, a core discovery uh, service or readiness assessment, all the way to mobilize, which is about getting up and running quickly. So AWS Control Tower, AWS Migration Hub, and prescriptive guidance, which literally walks you through step-by-step step to all the tools. And then finally, to make sure that you can effectively run and operate your operations on AWS, we have everything that helps you do automation and governance, in database migration, third-party tooling through Marketplace. Many of our hybrid solutions like Outpost um, have been a game changer on edge compute, and then even data and storage transfers. And hopefully you got many of the announcements that we've done across many of these different areas of focus. So it's an area that we're consistently um, evolving. So one thing I would definitely ask you uh, or I should say invite you all is to explore the different sets of tools that are available to you as our customers and partners. And most of them are actually at no cost um, to customers and partners. So one of the other questions that we get from customers is, um, what about modernization? So migration, we get it, lift and shift, you can do a lot. But modernization is fundamentally hard and challenging, especially if you don't have the right people, because now you're decoupling the application. Now you're really touching the code and changing how the, the code actually works. And so we totally understand and acknowledge the challenges that come with that. And so we're very, very focused on making sure that we can bring in the, the automation and the tooling to modernization as well. And so I'm actually quite excited. Uh, we announced this literally this morning. And so it's a new service offering called AWS Migration Hub Refactor Spaces, which, which basically allows you to uh, start refactoring applications in days and hours instead of months. Basically what happened before is you, know, you have large uh, applications that span across multiple different accounts. And so if you change an application, you need to understand the downstream impact of every single account. Um, your deployment cycles are very, very limited because you have to coordinate across all the different accounts. And so with refactor spaces, it's literally seamless, scalable, very fast deployment across any different accounts. And so if you have a microservices-based application, you don't have to worry about deployment cycles. You don't have to worry about scaling. It does that all automatically. And so it significantly reduces the time to set up and manage um, a refactor environment. You know, a lot, of, um, a lot of services can help you set it up, but for managing and governance, there's not a, a lot out there. So very, very excited about this service. And finally, you know, it, it also helps you shield any changes that you may be doing or others may be doing within your teams or other teams within your, your organization. And it effectively helps reroute the traffic um, across multiple accounts to make sure that it's fully optimized. So we're very heavily focused on modernization and you'll see more and more services and automation that'll be introduced for modernization as well. Finally, uh, partners are absolutely critical to uh, transformation success and across the value chain. And so AWS is focused on ensuring that we have the right partners in our ecosystem um, we know customers trust uh, partners and have been working with partners and see so we wanna make sure that, you know, partners that demonstrate um, the right values are part of our ecosystem. So we created migration competency um, and just under two years, uh, we were able to bring in more than 130 partners within our ecosystem. Uh, these are partners that have 
uh, advanced competency level. They've demonstrated um, strong results of delivery with different types of migration and modernization projects, uh, and they actually have established migration services practices. So any AWS uh, migration competency partner, you can literally just rely on them to make sure that they can uh, be there for your migration modernization journey. And this is an area that you can be rest assured that we will continue to invest more and more in building out our partner ecosystem further. And the best thing I like about this is that it's not just the global large partners. Um, they're obviously very core to our success, like Deloitte, Accenture, Salalem, and so many others. But these are also smaller, nimble, and niche partners, like partners that understand healthcare and electronic health records, partners that understand industrial IoT and are only focused on industrial IoT applications. And so we really have a very diverse and broad set of spectrums where we literally have the right tiers of partners available across the migration competency. So it really boils down to this, that you know, we've, we've talked a lot about you know, tooling, frameworks, training. We've heard from Al on, on how Amdocs was able to leverage um, some of the core you know, guidance. But where do you actually start? And so one of the big things that I always advise customers on is the best approach is to start with a clear, tangible business case. Understand what are the main business drivers. What is this migration or modernization really driving? And making sure that these transformation plans align with business outcomes. It really has to, because at the end of the day, IT needs to be fundamental to the business outcomes. That's one of the cloud value offerings. And so understanding the key drivers and analysis is going to be critical. It's also going to feed into then your milestones and KPIs. So having the right approach that within three years you want to be at global scale and be able to do X, Y, Z will then translate down to very clear, tangible milestones. So you'll be able to understand your migration progress and migration journey uh, much, much better, much more clear. Finally, the other thing is assessment and readiness. Making sure that you can get a detailed assessment of your current state and the readiness of your organization understanding what is the level of skills and talent within your organization, understanding what is the security and posture compliance level, understanding how many applications and interdependent processes that you have. So getting a good, clear understanding and details of all of that readiness and assessment is absolutely critical. AWS, by the way, has many different resources to get you st started across both of these dimensions. And actually, both of these dimensions are one of the first conversations we have whenever someone leverages the Migration Acceleration Program. And many of the things that we'll, we'll build out as part of the business case and assessment are at no cost to you. So the key thing is we want to get you started. So get started now and learn by doing. That's, that's really the big, big differentiator. You know, AWS um, reInvent is a learning conference, so I really would like to invite all of you to uh, explore the tons and tons of resources out there, many of them free resources. Um, it's been a pleasure sharing our learning and guidance with you, and I hope you benefited from the session. Thank you.